It's 9 a.m. Pacific time. I am in Washington State in the United States. That's on the West Coast, um, just above Oregon, the state of Oregon, which is just above the state of uh, California. Hi, Maria. How are you doing? <clears throat> Can you turn up your microphone just a little bit? So, Maria, are you from um, Mexico? Colombia. Okay. Good. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. So, you ready to do some reading? Oh, I see some other people are joining us um, in the Verblink chat. Hi there, Gustavo and Iman and Tan, Tara and Maria Jose. So, um, during the first few minutes here, uh, the first two minutes is when uh, the Verblink premium members can come into class. And um, if you would like to have a premium membership, you can try it out for free. I gave the link at the very beginning the very top here in the Verbling chat. So if you would like to go to that page, it shows you some ways that you can get some uh, free reservations. And then if you like that program, you can join it for $25 a month. All right. Let's see who else we got here. We have Diego. Hi, Diego. Hola. Hola. <laughs> and Tolga. Hi, Tolga. ¿Qué tal? Bien, Good morning. Hi there. Good morning. Everybody's coming into class. Okay, great. In this hour, we're going to be having um, a reading class. And um, I don't have my headphones on, but I'm going to see if I can hear all you guys okay. Um, we, I put the article up already in the chat, and I'm going to put it there again. It's right there. It's going to be about uh, business. It's kind of a business topic. It's about meetings and... Uh, Changing your meetings from sit-down meetings to walking meetings. So we're going to read this article and find out why this lady thinks that's a good idea. Okay? I think we're uh, full here, so let's just say hi to everybody and welcome. Uh, there are quite a few people viewing. I just want you to know that if you would like to follow along in this class, it is a reading class. So um, you do have the link there to the document that we will be reading. It comes from Wired.com, which is a, Wired is a magazine in the United States that talks about technology a lot, business, <laughs> culture, entertainment, things like that. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing. If you uh, did not get into the class because it is already full, you may stick around. Sometimes in the beginning here, the first few minutes, uh, the technology uh, does some weird things and people come in and out of the Google Hangout. So if you do see the join class button again at any time, that is when you can join the class. Otherwise, uh, these are the people who are going to be with me in the Google Hangout this hour. And the rest of you can listen to us read and read along with us if you'd like. You can also participate in the Verbling chat, as you see people here are, are already typing things. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay, so here we go. Hi, Diego. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm fine. Excellent. Excellent Great. today. Wonderful. And uh, Tolga, how are you? Tolga, where, where are you from? Me? I can't hear your microphone very well. It's kind of fuzzy. Yeah, does anybody hear it very well? It's kind no. of yes, yes, Lisa. You hear it okay? Hmm. Yes, Lisa. All right, I'm going to go to a... Did you hear Tolga okay? Or are you hearing me okay? We are hearing you okay, Lisa. Yeah. So, Tolga, maybe uh, do something with your microphone. I don't know. It's kind of a... Uh, maybe turn up the volume or something. Hi, Gustavo. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Very fine. And you? Good. Is that your little baby there? Yes, it's fine. Little <laughs> baby. Cute. <laughs> how old is... Is it a girl? Uh, it's a boy. It's, it's a, a little boy. boy. Yes, yeah, three months. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and hi, Ismail. <clears throat> hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you doing? 
Fine, thanks. All right. It's nice to see you again. It's good to see you. Okay. Uh, what time is it there in Turkey now? It is uh, five past six. Six. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what happened for, for us here in the United States is we just changed our clocks ahead. And that's called for us um, daylight savings time. So right now it's nine. Yeah, so we're a little bit uh, closer <laughs> in time. <clears throat> okay, Luis, hi, how are you? Luis, are you there? I'm saying hi to everybody, and I'm also checking that your microphones are working because this class um, you're going to need to read out loud. And so you have to make sure that your microphone is working. And sometimes what happens when you come into the Google Hangout window, your microphone is muted. <clears throat> and the way you find out if your microphone is muted is you can um, look here above your Verbling chat window over here on the right side. This is a microphone icon, a little picture. If it's red, then you are muted. So if you are muted, you have to click on it to unmute so that you can, so I can hear you. Luis, if you're talking, I cannot hear you. Are you there? <clears throat> hmm. Okay, Maria. Is your microphone working? <laughs> okay, it's kind of low. Maybe you can turn up the volume on your microphone. Okay, and Osama, how are you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, teacher. I'm fine. Thank you. Great. And Tomas, how are you? Hello, teacher. Hello. Um, I'm fine. I'm okay. from Argentina. Okay, great. Wonderful. And uh, hi there. I can't read your name. It's in, it's in Russian. <laughs> yes, I'm from Russia. My name is Sergey. I'm, uh, I'm well. Good. Great. Wonderful. Okay, Luis, I'm going to try one more time here. Are you there? Luis, Martin, Martin, okay, all right, there should be a join class button because I can't have people in the class who don't have a microphone working, so Luis, you can try again or somebody else can come in, okay, Maria, you made it in, <laughs> and Tolga, did you get your microphone to work? I need to make sure it works, it's not working, cannot hear you. So I'm I go out of the class and try coming back in. Sometimes that works to uh, fix your microphone. Because <clears throat> if you if the microphone's not working, it doesn't work. And Maria, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> okay. you. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, let's see. Tolga, did that work? Now you're probably muted now, so go and and uh, unmute. Hello? Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, let me see. Get some headphones for myself. Okay, everybody, did everybody go to the Google document yet? Uh, yes. Okay, Tolga, yes. try try talking again some more, so, just to make sure that it works. Hello. Hello. Okay. It's not great, but we'll try it. <laughs> it's a little fuzzy. So, okay. All right, here we go. So the way that we do the uh, reading class is I am going to uh, screen share the article. And let me get that up for you. Like I said before, this is an article from Wired Magazine. And it's called Kill Your Meeting Room, The Futures in Walking and Talking. So um, as many of you know, especially if you uh, work, um, have a business or something, and you have to go to meetings. Can everybody hear me OK? Yes, I hear you. Yes, okay. we can. Yes. Yes. All right, great, yes. thank you. <laughs> Just checking. OK. So. Um, you need to go to meetings. Oftentimes, people just sit around in a meeting. So that's the more typical way to do meetings. And this person 
is suggesting and giving advice on the idea of changing your meetings to walking meetings. So instead of sitting around at a desk or a big table and just sitting there for a long time uh, talking to each other about things, get up and walk around. So that's the article. And the way we're going to be doing this is I will read. And when I read, I usually highlight something like that. And then I read it <clears throat> out loud. And then I ask one of the students to read what I just read. So the purpose of this is when I'm reading, you will be listening. So you're listening to my pronunciation and my rhythm and the tone. And then when you're asked to read, you try your best to imitate me or to talk like I do. Not exactly, of course. We all have our own uh, specific accents and the way that we talk. But in terms of pronouncing the words in English, um, I'm the model. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, also, as we're going through, you may have questions about uh, what something means. You can ask. Um, after we finish reading the entire article, we will go back and go over some more of the vocabulary and make sure everybody understands it and have a general discussion. Maybe this brings up for you some of um, something related to your own life, and we will talk about that. Okay? So I'm going to read first, and then Tolga, you're going to be the first uh, person who will read after. Okay, let's one, two, three, four, five. And I think somebody just dropped out, so if you are watching, for example, Maria Jose, if you want to get in, I think there is one place available, so you should see the green uh, join class button. All right, here we go. Kill your meeting room. The future's in walking and talking. Sitting has become the smoking of our generation. I argued this in my recent talk at TED 2013 and elsewhere while advocating for the concept of walking meetings, or as I informally call them, walk and talks. Simply put, we spend more time sitting, average 9.3 hours a day, than sleeping, 7.7 .7 hours. And it doesn't even occur to us that this is not okay. So instead of using a standing desk, doing sitting meetings over coffee, or meeting in some fluorescent lit conference room, I do one-on-one -on -one meetings as walks. It resolves the trade-off between taking care of health and getting stuff done. Okay, Tolga. Tolga, can you read? Tolga, if you're reading, I cannot hear you. Is your microphone muted or something? <laughs> Check to see if it's muted. Yeah, I can't hear. Gustavo, how? Yeah, it's not really working. Gustavo, how about uh, you read that one? Gustavo? Where's all, where'd all my readers go? <laughs> okay, Ismael, how about you start? I don't know what happened to Gustavo. Maybe he had to go check the baby. <laughs> yes, Lisa. Okay, great. You're there. <laughs> Go ahead and read that one, starting with sitting has become. Yes. Sitting has become the smoking of all generation. I argued this in my recent talk at TED 2012. And elsewhere, while advocating for the concept of walking meetings, or as I informally call them, walking talks, simply put, we spend more time sitting, average 9.3 hours a day, than sleeping 7.7 .7 hours. And it doesn't even occur to us that this is not okay. So instead of using a stand desk, doing sitting meetings over cafe or meeting in some fluorescent lit, 
fluorescent lit conference room, I do one-on-one -on -one meetings as well. It resolves the trade-off between taking care of health and getting stuff done. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm going to tell uh, Gustavo to, to um, unmute your microphone. Just click on the microphone at the top of the verb link chat, or if you just put your uh, cursor over your picture, you'll see your name, and then there's a microphone, and if it's muted, it's red, so you just have to click on it to unmute it, okay? All right, the solution seems so obvious, yet it raises all sorts of but questions. How do you take notes? How do you collaborate without a whiteboard? What about cell phone reception? Can we improve mobile meeting technology? This last one is a panel theme at S, uh, X, SW this weekend. That's a conference, a technology conference. Okay, Julissa, hi there. Hi, Lisa. Did you get the link? Yes. I okay. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and read. Thanks. The solution seems so obvious, yet it raises all sorts of bad questions. How do you take notes? How do you collaborate with a, a whiteboard? What about cell phone reception? Can we improve mobile meeting technology? This last one is a panel theme at SW this week. Okay, good. Okay, Gustavo, it sounds like uh, it's working, so you can read this next one after I read it. Okay. Okay. It's interesting that we immediately turn to technology here, that all of these obstacles revolve around technology. But technology was meant to facilitate meetings, not drive them. Technology was meant to connect us, yet it more often disconnects us. And part of the reason I believe we should all do walking meetings is to really connect with the people we're meeting. Okay, Gustavo. Okay. It's interesting that we immediately turn to technology here, that all of these obstacles, obstacles revolve around technology. But technology was meant to facilitate meetings, not drive them. Technology was meant to connect us, connect us. Mm -hmm. Yet it's more often disconnect us. And part of the reason I believe we should all do walking meetings is to really connect with the people we're meeting. Okay. Do we really need to take notes in meetings? I am appalled by people's disingenuity here because often we're not taking, we're not, whoops, <laughs> they put talking, uh, we're not t taking notes on our devices during meetings, we're doing email or we're surface skimming for the tweetable line. We're not engaging. Dividing our attention is like living on a diet of cupcakes. Bring a short-term happiness but long-term emptiness. All right, I have to edit their article here a little bit. It brings a certain... Okay, there we go. All right. Maria, go ahead. Which Maria? You. Okay, okay. <laughs> next in line. Uh, I'm appalled by people's disingenuity here because often, often, we're not talking no taking to talking notes taking. on our devices. Take, yeah. oh, oh, sorry, taking notes on our devices during meetings. Uh, we're doing email, uh, or we are surfing. We are surface skimming for the tweet of tweetable line, we are not engaging. Dividing our attention is like living on a diet of cupcakes. Brings us short-term happiness but long-term emptiness. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Does everybody understand what that meant? Skimming for this tweetable line? <laughs> that was... Did you understand what that meant, Maria? Uh, I'm not sure if it means to write tweet or looking for an I interesting think we're, tweet. Yeah, looking for. So to skim something means to look quickly at it just to like, and that's what most people do when they're searching the internet. They're just like quickly going through things and not really spending a lot of time looking at it. So that's called skimming. Yeah. And uh, so you can imagine a person sitting there with their iPhone or something and just looking at different things that they might want to tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rather than paying attention to the meeting. Okay. Yeah. So technology 
as Sherry Turkle at MIT has shared, can make us less, not more, connected if we don't use it intentionally. It's become common practice over the last five years for everyone to have their devices out in meetings by default. So I'm not sure there's much intentionality there. Okay, Maria Jose. Okay. How are you, everyone? Good. Thank okay. you. Glad you made it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Technology, as Cherry Turkle at M MIT has shared, can make us less, not more connected if we don't use it intentionally. Intentionally. Mm -hmm. It's become common practice over the last five years for everyone to have their devices out in meetings by default. So I'm not sure there's much inten intentionality there. Mm -hmm. Everybody know what intention means? Intentionality? Anybody? On purpose? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> per by per yeah. So they're saying here that uh, we should be using our uh, technology devices, so our phones and things like that. By um, with you say with intention, so on purpose with something in mind of why we're using it, but instead it's really more like the default. So it means that the default is what is always happening. What happens? So like when you start your computer up, uh, maybe you have a browser uh, like we. I use Chrome, and my home page is by default Google. So it means that's what it is. So they're saying by default, everybody already has everything out, rather than being very intentional about using it. It's just what everybody does. So, and do we really need a device to record the key ideas out of an hour or half hour meeting? If so, there are some easy ways to take notes during a walking meeting. Siri, take a note. Anyone? Does everybody know what Siri is? Yeah, it's some sort of voice. Uh, yeah, it's on your iPhone. So on your iPhone, if you have Siri turned on, Siri's the name of the lady who talks to you. <laughs> That's her name. And if you uh, turn Siri on, you can just uh, say things to it and give her commands, and she'll do things like write your email or send a text message or take a note for you. So you can. it's a voice-activated uh, service. Okay, but if an idea strikes me as noteworthy, I actually signal it for my walking partner. That's really insightful. I want to remember that. And then pull out a device or hop online when the walk is over. If I feel like I've forgotten something, I just drop them a short email or text asking for clarity. Unsurprisingly, people easily and precisely recall their own points. Okay, Osama. Okay. And do we really need a device to record the key ideas out of an hour or half hour meeting? If so, there are some easy ways to take notes during a walk-in meeting. Siri, take notes. Anyone? What if an idea strikes me as unworthy? I actually signal it for my walk-in partner. That's really insightful. I want to remember that. And then pull out a device or help online when the talk is over. If I feel like I've forgotten something, I just drop them a short email or text asking for clarity, and surprisingly, people easily and precisely recall their own points. Mm -hmm. This one right here, precisely. Precisely. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it means. Ultimately, it's the absence of a device that lets me be present and listen with full attention. I believe this attention is the currency of our current work life era. What efficiency was to the industrial era, relationships are to the social era. Walking without technology keeps our attention and relationship bank balance high. Okay, uh, Suhad? Yeah, teacher. Hello, Can you teacher. read? Hi, how are you? <laughs> you want to read that paragraph? Okay. Ultimately, it's the absence of a device that lets me be present and listen with full attention. I believe this uh, attention is the currency of our current work-life era. What if what uh, if, uh, if efficiency? 
what efficiency was, was to the industri industrial era, relationships are to the social era, walking without technology keeps our attention and relationship bank balance high. Mm -hmm. Good. Letting go of meeting artifacts. Artifacts are the things you use, so like whiteboards. Whiteboards, agendas, these are the common artifacts of meetings. Yet, they're not always effective, and questions around walking meetings expose these gaps. For instance, how do we share notes if walking? The answer, beforehand. Walking meetings force information to be sent in advance. Okay, Tomas? Yes, uh, letting go and meeting artifacts. Mm -hmm. Whiteboards, agendas, these are the common artifacts of meeting. Yet, they are not always effective. And questions around working meeting expose these gaps. For instance, how do you hear note if you're working? The answer, the answer, mm -hmm. uh, answer. beforehand. Working meeting force information to be sent in advance. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to correct the pronunciation on this one. Agendas, so it has a j sound. Agendas there. Agenda. Agendas, yeah. Okay. Too many people wait until the meeting to share information resulting in the first 20 or 30 or 40 minutes spent on background which means the most expensive time eight people in one room prime time hours are used to do data transfer not idea building or problem solving sending information in advance has obvious benefits including more time for research formulating ideas and asking other people about their points of view to inform a better discussion. Perhaps more significantly, it allows those who are naturally quiet or introspective to contribute more meaningfully. Okay, Sergey? Yes, I'm here. <clears throat> Too many people wait until the meeting to share information resulting in the first 20 or 30 or 40 minutes spent on background, which means the most expensive time. Eight people in one room, prime time hours, are used to do day transfer, not a idea building or problem solving. Sending information in advance has obvious benefits, including more time for research, formulating ideas, and asking other people about their points of view to inform a better discussion. Perhaps more significantly, mm -hmm. it allows those who are naturally quiet or introspective to contribute more meaningfully. Meaningfully. Mm -hmm. Meetings are broken, and the associated artifacts are our crutches. Walking meetings help us well walk and meet instead of relying on those crutches. The ultimate crutch is our mobile devices. They've practically become a body part as we're almost always digitally connected. According to a Pew study in November, 67% of mobile device owners, which is about 87% of America, check their devices regularly, even when it doesn't ring or signal the arrival of incoming messages or emails. Okay, Gustavo? Okay, meters are broken. Uh, yeah, let me put here. Okay. Meters are broken, and the associate are artifacts mm -hmm. are our crutches. Walking meeting helps well walk and meet instead of rely uh, relying on relying. those uh -huh. relying on those crutches. Mm -hmm. The ultimate crutch is our mobile device. They've particularly become a body part of we are almost always digital connected. According to the Pew study in November, 67% of mobile devices owner, which is about 87% of America, check their device regularly, 
even when it doesn't read or sign out the arrival of incoming message or email. I one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost half, 44% <laughs> of Americans, sleep with their mobile device next to them. And 40% of 5,000 people interviewed in a time survey published last August admitted to using their mobile device while on the toilet. Sadly, the first thing I do before hugging my son or kissing my husband in the morning is pick up my mobile device. <laughs> I do that. Ismail. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Almost half, 44% of Americans sleep with their mobile device next to them. And 40% of 5,000 people interviewed in a time survey published last August admitted to using their mobile device while on the toilet. Sadly, the first thing I do before hugging my son or kissing my husband in the morning is pick up my mobile device. <laughs> yes. Okay. The right meeting for the right outcome. Walking meetings and all of the above changes help meetings be shorter. More importantly, walking meetings force us to pick the right meeting format for the right goal. And we should also match the right technology to the right goal, especially according to management expert Terry Griffith when it comes to group memory and group effectiveness. Okay, Julissa. The right meeting for the right outcome. Walking meetings and all of the above changes help meetings be shorter. More importantly, walking meetings force us to pick the right meeting format for the right goal. And we should also match the right technology to the right goal, especially according to management very briefly when it comes to group memory and group effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brainstorming meetings, for example, should have a common recorder so you walk out with a single bucket of shared ideas. Project planning meetings should use a shared tool and shared visualization of schedules. But one-on-ones are best for exploring ideas, connecting with one another, and developing shared purpose. For those, there is nothing better than a side-by-side -side walk. Okay, Maria. Um, yeah, where did you start? Was Brain, it brainstorming? Uh, brainstorming meetings, for example, should have a common recorder, so you so you walk out with a single bucket of shared ideas. Mm -hmm. Project planning meetings should use a shared tool and shared visualization of schedules. But one-on-ones are best for ex exploring ideas, connecting with one another, and developing shared purpose. For those, there is nothing better than a side-by-side -side walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right down. With activity trackers, we now get credit for any activity. In this case, technology raises visibility and awareness without interfering with meetings. There is, however, one technology I advocate for in walking meetings, fitness trackers, like Jawbone Up or Nike Fuel Band. I use the Fitbit activity tracker as it allows me to hide the device rather than accessorize snazzy outfits with a plastic wristband. Okay. Maria Jose. Okay. Which act, uh, with activity trackers, we now get credit for any activity. In this case, technology raises visibility and aware awareness without interfering with meetings. There is, however, one technology I advocate for in walking meetings, fitness trackers, like Jawbone app or Nike full band. I use the Fitbit, Fitbit activity tracker and it allows me to hide the device radar than accessorize a sneezy outfits with a plastic wristband. Does everybody know what the word accessorize means? No. <laughs> I, uh, accessories. Well, accessories. Like something like yeah. an umbrella or something. I don't know. Yeah, an accessory, uh, mostly it's women who accessorize. That means you put stuff on. 
your body and you use accessories. So accessories would be things like earrings, rings, jewelry, uh, bracelets, uh, necklaces, anything that you kind of add to your uh, body that you're going to wear, not um, beyond just your clothes. So watches, things like that, those are your accessories. So sometimes if you're going shopping with women, they'll make a joke and say, we need to accessorize, and <laughs> that means they need to go buy some stuff to put on. <laughs> So, but men men have it too. But men would be more like watches and hats and things like that. What is snazzy? Snazzy, snazzy uh, means uh, fashionable, like very okay. snazzy. And uh, if something looks snazzy, it looks cool, or it looks uh, maybe it's like bright and shiny, and it's just something that okay. it's a word to means cool, basically. Okay. Okay, before using this technology, things like walks didn't even count as exercise. That category was reserved for going to the gym or going on a run instead of walks. As long as those types of exercise remained uh, siloed activities, siloed activities, that's a weird word. Okay. <laughs> that means just like, uh, that's, that's an obscure word. You probably won't, probably won't ever use that, but it means just like... Uh, to get just in, in one place. They're focused in one area, not everywhere. So as long as those types of exercise remain siloed activities, they always directly competed with the category of getting things done. People to meet, ideas to develop, deliverables to complete. So basically there she's saying that um, you think of things um, as different when you're working. For example, you have all these things you have to get done but then she, um, exercise is usually thought of something separate, a separate category. But now she's combining them. So you're getting exercise while you're also getting all of these things done that you need um, on the job. Okay, Maria Jose? Oh, wait, you already read. Hold on. Uh, Suhan? Uh, before using this technology, things like walks didn't even count as exercise that category was reserved for going to the gym or going on a run instead of walks. As long as those types of exercises remain siloed activities, uh, they always directly competed with the category of getting things done. People to meet ideas to develop deliverables to mm -hmm. complete. Yes. Deliverables. Those are just, in business, they talk about deliverables. The things you're supposed to get done, like a report, you have to deliver it to your boss. That's a deliverable. But with activity trackers, we get credit for any activity, not to mention a viable feedback loop. With walking meetings, I can easily do 10,000 steps or about five miles. In this case, technology raises visibility and awareness without interfering with meetings. This small practical change has made a huge difference in both my health and relationships. I've even begun to think of my days in chunks of walking time, writing time, phone time, and so forth. Okay, Tomas. Yeah, uh, but with activity tracker, we get credit for any activity not to mention uh, a available feedback loop. With the working meeting, I can easily do 10,000 steps or about 5 minutes. In this case, technology raises visibility and awareness without interfering with meeting. This small practical change has made a huge difference in both my health and relationship. I've even begun to think of my days in chunks of working time, written time, phone time, and so forth. Okay. Good. I'm not arguing that we should ditch technology. Ditch means to get rid of. I'm not arguing that we should ditch technology in the workplace or for our meetings. 
Technology has its place in work. Of course it does. But as with all things, technology should be there to support human connection, not get in the way of it. All of us sitting and staring at our devices is not the way to spend our time in meetings or outside of them. Okay, Sergey? <clears throat> I'm not argue, arguing that we should ditch technology in the workplace or for our meetings. Technology has its place in work, of course it does, but it, as uh, with the uh, things, technology should be there to support human connection, not get in the way of it. All of us sitting and staring at our devices is not the way to spend our time in meetings or outside of them. Okay, good. That's all. Uh-huh, great. So, um... Before we go, I wanted to make sure everybody knows what a silo is. So uh, she used the word siloed, and like I said, it's not very common as a verb like that. Um, but you may come across it sometimes. Um, let me see. i got to get a screen share window. Hold on. Solo it, maybe. Um, yeah, what she, what she meant with that is... Uh, that compartmentalize. So when you compartmentalize things, it means you put them, uh, se you separate them. So this is actually what a silo is. So in the United States, um, we have big farms, and uh, they have silos, and that's where they put grain. Sometimes, uh, especially if you have like a dairy farm with lots of cows, you might put grain in there, and it ferments, and then it becomes silage and that's what you feed to your cows. So that's what a silo is, and so it's like a little, comp or, well, it's not little, it's big, <laughs> a big compartment. And so that's what she was just trying to use that word to uh, to describe how people, um, uh, they compartmentalize the things in their lives. So exercise is separate from work and the things that you need to um, get done. Okay, Ismail, you wanted to know what does uh, not get in the way of it. So what does it mean to get in the way of something? Anybody uh, want to tell to us? To inter interfere or interfere, be, an, yes. be an obstacle. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, um, for example, uh, you can get in someone's way. For example, if they're walking and you get in front of them, you're getting in their way, so uh, people don't like it when you get in, in their way. <laughs> so that's what it means. Um, does that make sense, Ismail? Yes, Ismail. Yes, okay. Thank you. Let me get back to the article here. Okay, good. And this last one right here I wanted to tell you also, ditch. So if you ditch somebody or ditch something, that means you leave them. So sometimes when you hear kids say, you know, they're going to go downtown, they're going to walk around or something, and maybe some kids left one kid, they, they, um, that kid will say, they ditched me. That means they left me alone. Okay? Yes, and an obstacle, obstacle is not resistance. Uh, somebody's asking in the verbling, Muzamil. Obstacle is something in your way. So, for example, um, if you're riding your bike on a path and there's, like, a, something in your way, I don't know what would be in your way, like maybe a big rock fell down from the mountain or something like that and it's covering the path, that's in your way. It's an obstacle that is in your way. It's something that prevents you from moving forward or doing what you have to do. Okay, does anybody have any... Um, responses to this idea of walking. First of all, I guess I wanted to know how many people uh, sleep with their cell phones by their beds? Yeah, I do. Oh, I am sleeping with my <laughs> <I don't>. cell phone. <laughs> You're sleeping with it? <laughs> it's because there's an alarm bell. I use the alarm bell. Yeah, to me too. That's what I do. I use the alarm. Oh. Ismail, you, you sleep with your cell phone? Yes, but uh, I try to put uh, a little away from my head. Yeah, yes. I read about it is not healthy. Yes. For human being. Yes. 
That well, that's yeah. what people say. We're we're the big experiment right now, whether or not it's it's healthy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, waving electromagnetic. Uh, uh huh. Uh, electromagnetic fields and things. Yes. Yes, that's what they say. Uh, yes. Um, anybody else sleep with their cell phone next to them? Oh, you guys are pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yes, but Julissa, did you say that you? Uh, I thought I heard you say something when the in the article when she was talking about checking her cell phone before kissing her husband and saying hi to her kids. No, I didn't. No, oh. <laughs> but, but yes, uh, I I use it as an alarm too. Myself, okay. But I put it on on the floor. Yeah. Oh, not on the my, floor. That's a good head. idea. Yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, okay. So, what did people think about the walking meetings? Has anybody ever gone on a walking meeting? Do you have uh, with your in your business maybe, or with clients, or with a maybe with a teacher or professor? If you're a student, have you ever gone on a walking meeting? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you usually sit down. Yeah, that's the more common thing. Ismail, how about you? Do you ever do walking meetings? Uh, Lisa, uh, I have never uh, been in a walking meeting, but uh, in my workplace, we are sometimes uh, talking about problems uh, by walking mm. uh, with our boss or with our. Uh, Comrades. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. But it is uh, not uh, official uh, walking meeting. Yeah. Right. For example, when uh, we are going to uh, eating room, uh, we are talking about problems by oh. walking. Yeah. Like when you maybe if you're going out to lunch or something and you're walking together, you're talking about stuff. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Julissa, have you had that experience walking around the office, maybe, or something with your uh, coworkers, talking? No, no, no. Not, not like that. But listen, I I don't know if I understood correctly. But in these meetings, they are walking around, discussing things, but they are using their artifacts or not? They are no. not using. Not using. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. She said that. She's basically saying that these meetings are good for one on one. So that means just you and another person. And because that's the type of meeting that you're doing, you don't really need all of those things because I'm trying to find it. <laughs> because um, if you if you really need to remember something, you can use like Siri. You could just take a note right then. Or if you forget something, you can just, um, you know, call that person or email them and say, what was that thing that you told me that I wanted to remember? And they'll remember it probably is what she's saying. So what she's saying is you have to really choose the right format for the type of meeting that you want. And that there are a lot of times where you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and instead of just sitting down um, at a desk or a table or something, and sitting there for an hour, you could go for a walk for an hour. Because, Lisa, mm -hmm. yes, go ahead. I can say something about the meetings. Yeah, sure. I don't know why in the company of one of my friends, uh -huh. uh, they uh, they one day uh, had had a meeting in a theme park, in an amusement park. How do yeah. you say? Amusement and park was, or theme park? Yeah, and was and was strange because uh, I thought that. How can you focus on the meeting in an amusement park? Yeah. And the, and the, and he told me that he was said he said to him yeah. that that fun that fun uh, makes mm -hmm. makes you more more uh, makes makes more easy uh, makes easier to to retain the ideas to mm -hmm. to, re to remember the ideas and to develop your yeah. Your, your thoughts, something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, and that goes back to what she was saying in, um, in the earlier part of this article, where she was saying that actually, um, 
a lot of times nowadays, because of all of the cell phones and the smartphones and the devices that people carry around with them, and it's almost like it's part of their body, she said, <laughs> um, that real in reality what happens for a lot of people in meetings is that they're not paying attention. They're not really giving their full attention and focusing. They're fooling around on these devices, checking their emails, looking to you know at Twitter, looking at Facebook, things like that. And so yeah, something that maybe gets you out of that environment and maybe away from your technology. And even though you're surrounded by an amusement park with rides and things like that, if you're talking and you're walking around, it's probably more um, interesting and stimulating. And so you have ideas come to you rather than if you're just kind of bored. You know, you're sitting there bored in a meeting. That's what I, I would think that would be a, maybe a good thing to try. Of course, it all, it all depends on what kind of meeting you're trying to have. Yes, do you And the kind of work. Yeah, yeah the yeah. kind of work you're trying to get done. Uh huh. Because in this way, most, uh, it's not like a meeting, it's more like a conversation, so you feel more relaxed and that's why yeah. the ideas, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think mm -hmm. it's idea, uh, this kind of meeting is ideal for uh, creative work. Mm -hmm. You need to, to, I don't know, maybe develop some consistent or something. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what was she telling us the benefit also? So not just uh, that you get you outside, but what it, what about the fitness aspect of it? How many uh, steps did she say she could take? Does anybody remember? 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> I think. 10,000. So it's funny that I found this article because just last night I went to a bookstore and I was reading some books and um, one of them was talking about, I guess there's this idea that, uh, you know, to be healthy, you should walk a hundred, uh, 10,000 steps per day and that people who are overweight, they often walk a lot less than that. And so this is kind of what I think this person is interested in talking about too is that because we spend so much time at work, um, most people in the United States, if you have a full-time job, you are working 40 hours and oftentimes more. So a lot of that time might be spent sitting in front of your computer, sitting in a meeting, sitting at lunch. And so she is looking for ways to uh, get healthy and be fit while yeah. getting things done, getting her work done. So she says she can, in these meetings, she can get uh, that much much done just by walking instead of sitting in the meeting. So I was, what, I was thinking about that like, so Maria, I know that you uh, work on the computer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. For your job. Do, how do you fit in walking or getting exercise with your life on the computer? <laughs> uh, how do I combine it? Yes, how do you fit it into your life or combine it or make sure that happens for you? Yeah, I would like to say here, I used to advocate walking before mm -hmm. sitting. I don't know, is that the right proposition here? Before yeah. or before in sitting? Okay. Before yeah. sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, now I, I am sitting way too much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that just a short or brief walk Mm -hmm. Makes me more um, alert. Or alert. More, yeah, you can tell. Um, so even if I just walk like, yeah, a short distance. Yeah, like get up and it, walk around your house. Or yeah, something. yeah. Especially now when it's like cold outside, I yeah, <laughs> I instantly get more focused. So. Mm hmm. That's the way I resolve it right now. I try to take short walks, mm -hmm. at least when I have a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sergey, do you have yeah. a do you have a job where you sit a lot or or not? Yes, I have a job which um, which uh, on on which I must uh, sit a lot. Yeah. And so, do you? Um, like the idea of having walking meetings or somehow getting walking uh, in your life? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, it's uh, all the problem and um, I 
now I uh, I think I can nothing do about it. Mm -hmm. Is it? Um, I I would imagine that because even for me, sometimes I live in Washington State and it's kind of uh, cold and wet during the winter, and so sometimes it's not very um, appealing or very fun to think about going outside and walking. But how is it in Russia? Are you used to the snow and do you get outside and walk or how what do you do for exercise or for getting some exercise? No, it's uh, spring uh, outside and yeah. Uh, we haven't got as much snow and oh, good. Uh, this winter was extremely mild. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a bonus. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, soon we will be able to play football. In oh, wow. Good. All right. Um, it's, it's a problem. There is more dirt uh, mm. outside. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Mud. It isn't pleasant. It isn't pleasant to to walk uh, in such uh, weather. Yes, exactly. And uh, Tomas. Yes. Hi. Uh, do you um, have a job where you have to sit for a long time? Yes, I I work with computers uh, and uh, the more time I sit. Yeah. So do you get up and move around sometimes, or, or how do you uh, make sure you get some exercise? Uh, sorry? How do you get exercise? If you, yeah, yes. Uh, no, not in work, but uh, in my time, in my free time, I play tennis. OK, nice. OK. And Suhad, yeah, ha, do you uh, go walking very often or get exercise that way? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm walking every day. Mm. And, uh, I'm a teacher, so I'm I'm not sitting. <laughs> <laughs> You're always. not sitting. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. walking around the class. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. And, uh, That's good. I'm walking every day. I take my children to the park. To play, uh -huh. yeah, so I, I still always sitting, uh, walking or stand. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, okay, Marie Jose, you have to go. Goodbye. Okay, hi, Kurle, you just joined us. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Did you hear the article? Did you read it with us? Yeah. No? yeah. Okay. So, do you spend a lot of time sitting, working on the computer? Um, no, I'm, I'm walking. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sitting, but um, at the evening I try to sit uh, in front of computer. Okay. So my walking is um, not sitting. Oh, okay, that's it's, good. It's more going. What do you do? Um, I'm teaching. Oh, okay, great. So and maybe you are sitting during the lesson, and uh, uh, but you try don't to sit um, so uh -huh. long time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Kurale, where where are you from? Um, I'm from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Ismail Isma was wondering. Okay, Julissa, uh, do you walk every day? Yes. Yes. I'm walking every day. Um, oh. I work six days. Oh, that's good. Six days in a week, and uh, only Sunday is weekend. Uh huh. For me, your rest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Julissa. Yes. Yeah, Julissa. Yeah, I like to walk. Uh huh. Uh, sometimes I can walk. I don't know, thirty minutes. Yeah. I like no, like no stop. Mm. Yes. And I think this is a very interesting idea for meetings. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to have that kind of meeting. <laughs> yeah, just going away from the office and mm -hmm. you know being in a different place, it makes you more relaxed. And mm -hmm. 
It's very correct, Billy. Yes. Yeah. Ismail, you're not you're not happy about sitting so much? Yes, I'm not happy. Is uh, I have to sit uh, on the table. Mm. Do you and work on a computer a lot? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I try to walk in the lunch break yeah. when the weather is good yeah. on sunny day, mm -hmm. especially. Yeah. And Gustavo, do you sit a lot in front of a computer? Yes, I am programmer and a web designer, <laughs> and I oh, spend. Yeah. <laughs> Almost all my day in front of a computer. Oh in wow! In fact, in fact, I'm getting fat <laughs> because I didn't walk. <laughs> Me too. That's why I'm going to get up and walk. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's why. Um, I mean, I'm thinking a lot of us spend so much time in front of the computers. Maybe um, with these smartphones, we can do something uh, that's for our jobs. On the smartphone, so we can walk around and also work <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I hope everybody gets outside today and gets to take a little bit of a walk. Uh, it's, it's an interesting idea to count your steps. Like, just see how many steps you're actually taking because I think people think they take more than they actually do. So it's a kind of an interesting experiment to figure out how much you actually walk in a day. Okay. Uh-oh. Smartphones are going to kill us. I hope not. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming to class, you guys. Uh, it was Thank inter you, Interesting topic, and hopefully we can all get a little bit more walking into our lives and get off these computers. But they're also very, very useful, so it's hard to get away. And um, I'm going to be teaching a couple more classes later tonight, so if any of you guys are awake at that time and want to come and do some more sitting, <laughs> you can join, <laughs> you can join my class. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lisa. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. You are welcome. Holga, okay? Are you hearing me okay? We are hearing you okay, Lisa. Yeah. So, Tolga, maybe uh, do something with your microphone. I don't know. It's kind of a... Uh, maybe turn up the volume or something. Hi, Gustavo. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Very fine. And you? Good. Is that your little baby there? Yes, it's fine. Little <laughs> baby. Cute. <laughs> how old is... Is it a girl? Uh, it's a boy. It's, it's a, a little boy. boy. Yes, three you? months. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and hi, Ismail. <clears throat> hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. All right. It's nice to see you again. It's good to see you. Okay. Uh, what time is it there in Turkey now? It is uh, 5 past 6. 6. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what happened for, for us here in the United States is we just changed our clocks ahead. And that's called, for us, um, daylight savings time. So right now Some it's time. 9. Yeah, so we're a little bit uh, closer <laughs> in time. <clears throat> okay, Luis, hi, how are you? Are you there? I'm saying hi to everybody and I'm also checking that your microphones are working because this class um, you're going to need to read out loud and so you have to make sure that your microphone is working and sometimes what happens when you come into the Google Hangout window your microphone is muted <clears throat> and the way you find out if your microphone is muted is you can um, look here above your Verbling chat window over here on the right side, this is a microphone icon, a little picture. If it's red, okay, let's see. Get some headphones for myself. Okay, everybody, did everybody go to the Google document yet? Uh, yes. Okay, Tolga, yes. try, try talking again some more so, just to make sure that it works. Hello. Hello. Okay. It's not great, but we'll try it. <laughs> it's a little fuzzy. So, okay. All right, here we go. So the way that we do the uh, reading class is I am 
I'm going to uh, screen share the article and let me get that up for you. Like I said before, this is an article from Wired Magazine and it's called Kill Your Meeting Room, The Futures in Walking and Talking. So um, as many of you know, especially if you uh, work, um, have a business or something and you have to go to meetings. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I hear you. Yes, okay. we can. Yes. Yes. All right, great, yes. thank you. <laughs> Just checking. Okay, so um, you need to go to meetings. Oftentimes people just sit around in a meeting. So that's the more typical way to do meetings. And this person is suggesting and giving advice on the idea of changing your meetings to walking meetings. So instead of sitting around at a desk or a big table and just sitting there for a long time uh, talking to each other about things, get up and walk around. So that's the article. And the way we're going to be doing this is I will read. And when I read, I usually highlight something like that. And then I read it <clears throat> out loud. And then I sit down meetings to walking meetings. So we're going to read this article and find out why this lady thinks that's a good idea. Okay? I think we're uh, full here, so let's just say hi to everybody and welcome. Uh, there are quite a few people viewing. I just want you to know that if you would like to follow along in this class, it is a reading class. So um, you do have the link there to the document that we will be reading. It comes from Wired.com, which is a, Wired is a magazine in the United States that talks about technology a lot, business, culture, entertainment, things like that. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing. If you uh, did not get into the class because it is already full, you may stick around. Sometimes in the beginning here, the first few minutes, uh, the technology uh, does some weird things and people come in and out of the Google Hangouts. So if you do see the join class button again at any time, that is when you can join the class. Otherwise, uh, these are the people who are going to be with me in the Google Hangout this hour, and the rest of you can listen to us read and read along with us if you'd like. You can also participate in the Verbling chat, as you see people here are, are already typing things. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay, so here we go. Hi, Diego. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm fine. Excellent. Excellent Great. today. Wonderful. And uh, Tolga, how are you? Tolga, where, where are you from? Me? I can't hear your microphone very well. It's kind of fuzzy. Yeah, does anybody hear it very well? It's kind no. of fuzzy. Yes, yes, Lisa. You hear it okay? Hmm. Yes, Lisa. All right, I'm going to go to... Uh, did you hear? It's 9 a.m. Pacific time. I am in Washington State in the United States. That's on the West Coast, um, just above Oregon, the state of Oregon, which is just above the state of uh, California. Hi, Maria. How are you doing? <clears throat> Can you turn up your microphone just a little bit? So, Maria, are you from um, Mexico? Well, Colombia. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So, you ready to do some reading? Oh, I see some other people are joining us um, in the Verbling chat. Hi there, Gustavo and Iman and Tan, Tara and Maria Jose. So, um, during the first few minutes here, uh, the first two minutes is when. Uh, the Verbling Premium members can come into class and um, if you would like to have a premium membership you can try it out for free. I gave the link at the very beginning, the very top here in the Verbling chat so if you would like to go to that page it shows you some ways that you can get some uh, free reservations and then if you like that program you can join it for $25 a month. Alright, let's see who else we got here. We have Diego. Hi Diego. Hola. 
Hola. <ríe> en Tolga. Hi, Tolga. ¿Qué tal? Bien, good gracias. Morning. Hi there, good morning. Everybody's coming into class. Okay, great. In this hour, we're going to be having um, a reading class. And um, I don't have my headphones on, but I'm going to see if I can hear all you guys okay. Um, we, I put the article up already in the chat, and I'm going to put it there again. It's right there. It's going to be about uh, business. It's kind of a business topic. It's about meetings and uh, changing your meetings from then you are muted. So if you are muted, you have to click on it to unmute so that you can, so I can hear you. Luis, if you're talking, I cannot hear you. Are you there? <clears throat> hmm. Okay, Maria. Is your microphone working? <laughs> okay, it's kind of low. Maybe you can turn up the volume on your microphone. Okay, and Osama, how are you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, teacher. I'm fine. Thank you. Great. And Tomas, how are you? Hello, teacher. Hello. Um, I'm fine. I'm okay. from Argentina. Okay, great. Wonderful. And uh, hi there. I can't read your name. It's in, it's in Russian. <laughs> yes, I'm from Russia. My name is Sergey. Sergey. I'm, uh, I'm well. Good. Great. Wonderful. Okay, Luis, I'm going to try one more time here. Are you there? Luis? Martin? Martin? Okay. All right, there should be a join class button because I can't have people in the class who don't have a microphone working. So, Luis, you can try again or somebody else can come in. Okay, Maria, you made it in. <laughs> and Tolga, did you get your microphone to work? I need to make sure it works. It's not working. Cannot hear you. So, I'm I, go out of the class and try coming back in. Sometimes that works to uh, fix your microphone. Because <clears throat> if you if the microphone's not working, it doesn't work. And Maria, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, let's see. Tolga, did that work? Now you're probably muted now, so go and and uh, unmute. Hello. Yeah, that's a little better. 